Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Coffee in the Corral. I'm Abigail Hobbs. This is Zelenka Breeze. So, you gonna come say hi? Oh, she's definitely gonna come say hi. Yeah, hi, baby. Hello. Say good morning to everybody. Oh, she's gonna itch her face here on the mounting block. Oh, and Sky's here. It says literally like I press record and the horses come rushing over. Hey, baby. They did. They've both been, that, I didn't say they both, they've all been peacefully eating out here. I just started recording and they came right over. I love it. Oh, you can hear Sky. She's coming in and asking for an itch. I feel really good right now because uh, this weekend I was able to get to my horses. I trimmed them all, trimmed their hooves. Uh, Jennifer helped me. I got them all groomed, fly sprayed put um, salve on any of their cuts and wounds and um, looked for ticks, took all the ticks off, like just did all the things. We trimmed the bridle paths. They're just so well cared for. I, like it feels really good to me when I can get to my horses and take care of all of the things. Um, I trim their hooves about every four to six weeks and um, I don't groom them as much as I would love to but um i try to get to them once a week and uh sometimes i just get time to train them sometimes i get time to groom them sometimes i get time to do both but anyways feels really good to have them all in tip-top shape they're looking good they're feeling good there's tons of grass out in the pasture um in fact we've had to start putting grazing muzzles on them because they are getting fat <laughs> and they only go out at night time but there's a lot of grass out there right now. So really, really grateful for all the rain we've had recently. The grass is growing and um, hoping to get some decent hay this year. Um, we'll see. Deo! Hold on, guys. No! Come on! Deo's going off exploring. Come here! Come here! He's trying to go hunting in the neighbor's pasture. Come on! Stay over here. Come here! You gotta come podcast with mommy. Good boy! Good boy. Anyways, hi everybody. Thanks for coming back. Welcome back. And um, it's a beautiful day out here in the corral. I brought my stool up or my mounting block a little closer to the camera today so that um, you could see my face a little bit better because I'm actually going to read something to you guys. Um, good boy. Come on. Come on in here. Come here. You want to say hi to everybody? Here's Dale. Quick update. Okay, here's Deo, and he's feeling much better. All of his stitches are out. He just has to finish up his round of steroids. He's almost done with that. And then he'll finally be off all of his medications. Um, like I said, he, he's healing really nicely, actually. His hair is growing back in. His wounds are closing. Um, Nate just took the last stitches out this last weekend. And look at him. He's happy. Look at him. He's feeling so good. He's back to his normal self. And he didn't have to wear the cone. It's just, ah, uh, wonderful. The things we take for granted. Speaking of another thing that we take for granted, when was the last time you truly thought about how comfortable your couch was? <laughs> okay. So remember when I, I, this is a while back, I talked about my whole frustration with ringworm in our household and trying to get rid of it and doing the huge 11 and a half hour cleaning and disinfecting anyways when we did that we took our couch out of the house we wrapped it up and stored it in the garage so i was really um uh, firm on not bringing the couch back in until i was convinced the ringworm was not going to come back because i didn't want to do another huge cleaning like that and, um so i'm just like let's not bring the couch back in until we're sure anyways this past weekend on uh, Saturday, this last Saturday, we brought the couch back in the house. People, it's been eight weeks since we've had a couch in our house, okay? Let that sink in. Do you know what it's like to camp for eight weeks? <laughs> what we did in place of not having a couch in our living room is we brought in camping chairs 
And there was one that I would say affectionately, but it was not, by the end of it, it was definitely not affectionately named, our Campofa. So Jennifer and I named it our Campofa. It was, it's a double camping chair that's combined that I had bought for Nate and I last year. As like this, oh, we always like wish we could sit together when we're camping. So I saw this double camping chair. It's like a, it's like a bench, you know? Well, the dumb thing about it is it still has this really, um, uncomfortable metal bar that goes down between the two seats so you're still like you're sitting in two separate seats okay it's just you don't have maybe an armrest between you so you can't like snuggle or lay on each other or lean over because there's these metal bars in the way and it's so uncomfortable um so we brought those out because we originally thought two weeks was going to be you know we could bring the couch back in yeah it's been eight weeks and i think we're finally cleared up enough like there's a little bit of residual, um, I feel like, but I'm also like super sensitive to it at the moment. Um, so anyways, it was time. It was time to be done with the Campofa. I do not recommend buying a Campofa. Say no, say no to Campofas. They're so uncomfortable. We tried to have movie nights and I was just like, it's not, it's useless. Let's not even do a family movie night. We let's just do something else because trying to sit in the living room to be comfortable was out of the question for the past eight weeks it's been terrible um we've been making do and it's been awesome really i mean nobody's as far as like nobody's complained except for jennifer and i <laughs> so uh yeah and i couldn't really complain because it was my idea to take the couch out so anyways yeah, we brought the sofa back in, but before I brought it back in, I took three and a half hours to clean it. And my girls and I went out there and like we disinfected it, scrubbed it down, vacuumed it, disinfected it again several times, let it sit out in the sun all day. <sighs> then we could clean the house again and swept and mopped again and bleached and then brought the couch back in. Anyways, here is, here I'm going to hold my coffee cup up because I don't have a glass of wine. Here is to celebrating the fact that I believe, and I, I'm really scared to say this, but I believe that we have conquered the ringworm and we are getting back on track to feeling a little bit more normal. So hold up your coffee cup, your wine cup, your water, whatever it is, your Powerade. Cheers, my people. <laughs> So yeah, last night we did a movie with the kids and it was, dare I say, heavenly sitting on a sofa. Then we could lay on the sofa, everyone could get comfortable. Oh my gosh, it was amazing. And I thought the little things that we take for granted, like sofas, everyone has a sofa, right? Maybe, maybe not. But my God, they're comfortable. Anyways, whoever invented sofas, thank you. Um, yes. So there's your update. Okay. Um, I wanted to talk today about something I'm really excited about, which is my son last week graduated high school. He's officially done. Yes. Officially done with high school. And I'm still alive to talk about it. That is a good sign. <laughs> oh my God, yeah. So last Friday he graduated and we went to his graduation and it was amazing. Um, what was, and what was amazing really was just seeing how happy he was. Uh, just the look on his face. He couldn't stop smiling all night. I haven't seen him, like it was as if a ginormous burden had been lifted off of him. And, and even my girls commented on like, we never see Jaden smile that much. Like I was like, he feels relieved. He feels so relieved and proud of himself for what he accomplished. So I have a lot of thoughts about that. And last week I was really thinking um, about it leading up to his graduation. Just like, I can't believe it's here. Like. I can't believe we all made it and it's here and like he's getting ready to go into this new season of life and it just suddenly is like oh my god 
my my oldest child is almost an official grown up. Like this is crazy. Hey, can you not touch the phone? This is Zell. Hello, Zell. She's over here to check on everything and make sure we're good. You want some coffee? You want some coffee? Hey, come here. We gotta give Zell some coffee. Last time I forgot. Here, baby. Some coffee? There she is. Zell is celebrating with us. Mm hmm. Okay. So, um, yeah. So, what last week I was thinking a lot about it and, um, you know, just like, I don't know. It, it's crazy to think that I've, I have a kid that old. Am I, am I really that old? <laughs> am I allowed to have a kid that old? I don't know. I mean, I still feel like I have a lot of growing up to do. <laughs> so it's hard to imagine one of my kids being grown up, you know? So anyways, last week on my, um, my biking into town, I wrote a blog with all my thoughts about my son graduating. So last week it was Thursday when I was biking. And um, so the next day my son was graduating. So that was all very fresh on my mind. And so bear, keep that in mind. I'm gonna, I would like to read to you the blog that I wrote last week. Um, but of course it's written right before my son graduated. But I feel like it, um, I don't know. It, it does more justice than if I just try to talk about it. So Zell, don't. She's going to try to push the camera. Ah, Zell, get off the camera. Babies. She said, no, I have to do it. All right. She's, no, now she's going to bite it. She's a very inquisitive creature. I'm going to fix the camera now. Bert. All right. Did you get it out of your system? <laughs> Her muzzle is twitching. Like, not yet. I'm coming back for it. Anyways, we'll see how... We'll see how little trouble you can cause. Um, so anyways, I'm just going to read you guys this blog. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. This is These are my thoughts last week, the day before my son graduated. And then maybe I'll expound a little bit on um, on it afterwards. No, because I was going to try to eat the camera. You can be over here visiting, but you can't eat the camera. Come here. Come here. Come over by me if you want to play. <laughs> okay, so the name of the book. Does the turtle really need help? Instead of saying, I got terribly confused and lost twice on my bike ride in, let's just say I took the scenic route. So much that an 18 mile ride became a 29 and a half mile ride. <laughs> yep, that's me. Thank God for my lack of direction because I got in a serious workout today. Along my way, I came upon two turtles, several feet from each other, both crossing the road at the same time. Suddenly, I noticed an SUV was coming up behind me. For a moment, I panicked. I could foresee the vehicle going around me, but accidentally running over the turtles right ahead of me. I quickly pulled off the side of the road and waited for it to pass so that it would have time to go around the turtles. My plan worked, and I breathed a sigh of relief as the, nope, Zell, stop. She's trying to mess with the camera again. Hey, you can be over here, but you can't cause trouble. Okay, sorry guys. My plan worked, and I breathed a sigh of relief as I saw the reptiles emerge back from their shell and start the, if you can call it, rush to the other side. I have been known for stopping during my runs, bike rides, and even car rides to help turtles cross the road. Today though, a very different thought popped into my head that stopped me. What if it was an important growth and learning opportunity for turtles that we keep taking away from them in our effort to save them? Oh, here comes some geese, guys. Sorry. We're going to pause and listen to these geese for just a minute. They're flying right over. Oh my God. I can hear the wind. They're so low. I can hear the wind as their, their um, wings are beating the wind. That's cool. Okay. Sorry. You have to stop for the geese, you know? 
Okay, so what if it's an important learning opportunity that we're taking away from them in our effort to save them? What if this was part of the animals learning to evolve and navigate their changing environment? Now, before you jump into judging me as a heartless turtle killing human, please keep in mind that I am in no way suggesting that it's the turtle's fault for making bad calls as to when they should cross. I know that it is the humans who put roads inside their territory, thereby creating a dangerous and potentially harmful situation. So yes, we are definitely responsible. But I can't help but wonder if we truly do nature as many favors as we think when we intervene. There's more geese. <laughs> Recently, I read an article stating that turtles live their whole life within a one mile radius. And while one mile seems so tiny to us, I can only imagine that for a turtle, well, it's probably plenty of space to range and spend its life exploring. The article was pleading with people to stop bringing turtles home that they pick up off the road. Many people bring, bring them home for their kids to see, and then together they release them in what they deem a much safer environment away from the busy road. What they don't know is the turtle spends the rest of its life wandering around trying to find its home until it dies. Yep. Okay, wow, this blog really took a dark turn. I promise it was not my goal today to depress you. So why all this disturbing turtle talk? Well, tomorrow my son graduates high school. It's been 11 long years of homeschool and one seemingly unending year of public school as a senior. Recently, I've been doing a lot of reflecting on how we raised our son. Suddenly it feels like all the years are closing in and the time with our son at home with us is quickly coming to an end. This August, he is off to college at Illinois Wesleyan University. University. The two questions that keep circling in my mind are, did we do enough? And, do we do too much? I know, pretty ambiguous questions, but still, I struggle and hope that we got it enough right for my son to be able to go confidently adult on his own. Yesterday, I started an audiobook called how to raise an adult, break, how to raise an adult, break free from the overparenting trap and prepare your kids for success by Julie Lithcott Haynes. I think that's how you say it. I'm only into chapter three and my mind has already been blown several times. She talks a lot about the issues of parents in this day and age doing way too much for their kids that end up disempowering them. She discusses how it's important to let our kids struggle and figure things out. It makes sense. But as a parent, it's damn hard to watch your kids struggle and not try and save the day constantly or want to shield them from consequences and discomfort. Rayanna is over here to say hi to us, by the way. Hi, Rayanna. How does this tie into turtles? Well, sometimes I worry about how my son will be able to manage himself in college, almost seven hours from me. He sleeps through all three of his different and very loud alarms. He doesn't give himself enough time to pack food for his day. He forgets important items. He forgets to care for his body. His bedroom looks like he lives in an active volcano. His laundry piles up until nobody knows what is clean and what is dirty. And sometimes he's so tired, he randomly falls asleep anywhere in the house. Of course I worry. I also must admit though, that I am guilty of overmanaging him in an attempt to keep him from suffering life's consequences. Now, I am in no way saying that he should get run over by a car if he doesn't manage his time well. <laughs> and the more I type, the more I realize maybe my turtle analogy wasn't the best segue into talking about my son. Although he's really slow in the morning, so maybe that's the turtle connection. <laughs> I don't know. What I did see, though, in watching the turtles cross the road was this simple fact. They succeeded without my help or interfering or interference. Those brave little dudes got safely to the other side and onto their next adventure. It's time, time for me to let go and trust. Trust that my son is fully capable because deep inside, I know he is. The truth is that he got into college because he is the one who did all the research and sent in all the applications. He is amazing and the most 
important ways, he's going to be fine. He will figure all the other things out. He doesn't need his mom to protect him from life's lessons. He will learn when and when not to cross the road. Is life risky? Yes. If we're not willing to take risks, then we aren't really willing to really live. Although I am freaking excited for my son, it also feels so scary when I think about him moving away and making his own life. I won't be there to make sure he has eaten. I won't be there to hug him when he feels overwhelmed with life. Tears fall and a sudden huge lump in my throat comes as I type this. If you are a parent, you get this. It's hard to let go because the thought of our kids suffering and we won't be there to fix it feels unbearable. But I have to remind myself that life is about the mixed experiences of pain and joy. I have survived some very painful things and honestly, so have my children. My babies, don't pull on my cord, please. Thank you. Ryan is getting into my stuff. Give me some space. Space, please. Thank you. As my kids venture into adulthood, they will have many more life experiences. Some amazing, some heartbreaking. My hope is that through it all, they will continue to learn, evolve, feel empowered to be themselves, and confidently shine their light wherever they are. Tomorrow, my son will cross the stage and get his diploma. And no, I won't be there up there making sure he crosses safely, but yes, I will be screaming in celebration the loudest. I used to think it was most important for my kids to know how proud of them I was, but now what I want most is for my kids to be proud of themselves. That is what will truly get them where they want to be in life. That sense of self-pride and accomplishment. And they can't really have that if I keep picking them up and carrying them across the road. To all my fellow friends out there who love their kids fiercely and can relate to the struggle of turning in our road guard vest. I feel you. I'll be thinking of you tomorrow as, my, as many kids will be walking across that stage and into the next stage of life. We were never meant to stay in one season. And though this letting go feels so hard, I have a hunch that it's also going to feel so good. Did I make mistakes? Hell yes. Do I regret things? Hell yes. Did I love my son the very best I knew how? Hell yes. And I plan to keep learning how to love him better and in a new way as he moves into adulthood. And that's what I think matters most. I love you all. I also love turtles. <laughs> and then I have to read you all my hashtags that I put on my blog. If you haven't visited my blog, it's biketotype.com. And I always put ridiculous hashtags at the end. <laughs> hashtag graduation 2023 hashtag proud mama hashtag letting go hashtag turtle crossing hashtag no interference hashtag listen to nature hashtag turtles know best hashtag I'm not sure if they actually do but it sounded like a good hashtag hashtag please don't quote me on that <laughs> and then at the end I have a special thanks to the two daring turtles today who inspired this blog but more importantly, they help me see some areas I need to grow in as a mom. I am forever grateful to nature and the everyday lessons it brings me. That's it. That was my blog. And the next day, my son walked across the stage and I did scream the loudest, just like I promised. And um, I did cry when he flipped his tassel and then threw his hat in the air because it to me it was like oh my god this is really happening like he did it he made it like you guys have to realize he did 11 years of being homeschooled in his very last year he went into public school it was so foreign for him it's literally like going to a different planet and he went to a different planet on his very hardest year of school and I am so proud of him and it was a frustrating year for all of us. Um, and I wished I had handled it better. Like, <laughs> um, and I say that just because like, I, 
that's one of the things that I realized and I'm trying to work on is like to not take on when my kids get stressed out, I take on their stress and I take on, and then I try to fix it and I try to help them and I tried to manage them and, and have him do it in the way that I would do it. And it just doesn't work for our kids, you know? Like, it, so it was, for me, it was learning to let him bear the weight and the responsibility and do it the way that worked for him, which was waiting till last minute on all of his assignments, which really stresses me out. But that's just, it's just the way that he works. He works best under pressure. And so like, um, I learned a lot last year. I, I'd like to say I nailed it but I didn't at all and I know that I have much more to learn and I'll be working on continually getting better at it with my my daughters going into public school um, but I just keep reminding myself that is it it's about learning and the same thing for my son giving him that space and that blank canvas and saying you build your life how you want it to be and he gets to choose and, and it's just it's so exciting like I'm really excited about him going to college and I'm really nervous too just because um you know the thought of not having him home he's so much fun <laughs> when he's not tired and grumpy <laughs> and so it's just that um, excitement, uh, excitement for him to go on his new adventure. And I'm happy that he's going far away. It's not really that far. I mean, a little way, is it really that far? He's not going to a different country yet. He does want to probably study abroad, but, um, I'm really excited because I want my kids to explore. I want them to go far. I want them to, I don't want them to be stuck in a small town or do what they've always done. Like go big, go big and make that your home, not go big or go home. <laughs> So, um, but of course there's that part of me that will just miss him. <clears throat> and, um, yeah, I don't know. I know you guys get it. If you have kids, you're like, yeah, it's, it's this space of like, yes, it's time. I'm ready for you to go spread your wings. And it's also the realization that, oh my God, like it feels like when your kids are little, all the way up until they're grown. Like some people say just the baby stage or just the toddler. But for me, it felt like it took forever to get them graduated. But now suddenly I'm like, oh my God, like it's, it was just, it happened so fast, but it didn't because in the middle of it, it was like, will this ever, ever end? So it's okay. I still have a couple kids and we, we have quite a long haul ahead of us. So it's not like I'm an empty nester or something. Look at me. Anyways. Yeah, so um, I'm excited for him. He's going to be working a lot this summer and then headed off to college this fall. So I have lots of... Um, I'm really grateful that I have, um, in the last few years, made this transition to really build my own life and pursue the things that I love. Because I never wanted to be one of those parents that... Once their kids were gone, it was like their life was over. So I encourage anyone out there that is a parent um, and is, you know, fully invested in their kids and sometimes maybe so invested that they forget to invest in themselves. Like, your kids aren't meant to be with you forever. We're just raising these humans as responsible as we can and as we, as much as we know how. And then we release them into the wild and we get to continue living our life. So don't forget that you need to be building your own life and chasing your own dreams while you're raising your kids so that once they're gone, you still have your beautiful life to live, right? All right. That's my, that's my little, um, my little plug for freedom for the taking because it's important that you Remember, you're a priority too, not just your kids. I love you guys. I hope you have a wonderful week. Um, next week, so this this coming weekend, uh, we're taking my son on a graduation trip. We are super excited about it. We're going whitewater rafting in Colorado. Our kids have never been whitewater rafting. The last time I went, I was 18, so that was just a couple minutes ago. <laughs> um, 
So our kids are so stoked and we love Colorado. We haven't been back there since we moved. It's been four years. So we're going to do a bonsai trip, go up there, do a whitewater rafting trip, do some hiking and drive home. It's going to be crazy and exhausting, but fun. And we're going to make a lot of memories. So I tell you that because next week, um, I'll be taking a week off of podcasting. So I will take a break so that it gives us time to and have our family adventure and then come home and you know how it is. Have a vacation for your vacation. Unpack and unwind and do a lot of laundry. <laughs> and go grocery shopping and all the things. So super grateful because my partner Jennifer has um, volunteered to take care of our farm this weekend. So she's amazing. Huge shout out to her. Um, and because without that, it wouldn't be possible for us to leave all of our beautiful animals. So I will see you guys in two weeks. And hopefully my goal is for my next podcast to be interviewing my son so that you'll get to hear from him and his point of view on what it was like to uh, do his senior year in high school and graduate and kind of his dreams and get to learn a little bit about him. He is so cool. You guys are going to love him. Don't miss it until then. Um, be awesome because you are okay. All right. I'm done. I love you guys. Peace out. Mwah.